Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project, and this clip is a big deal to me. Um, it contains the most important footage I've ever shot, and uh, it ends an era of argument about whether the lunar wave is real. Here are three of the people who have shot the wave, and I should have put Gustav's name on that. I apologize. Here's Richard 205 Maria's footage. Uh, the wave's coming in from the top, and it will head down. There it is. Now there's a quick move of the camera here, and I'm not sure whether we're seeing him come back and catch the second wave. That looks like it might be a cut. In the editor, I went frame by frame. Uh, I'm not sure. At any rate, there is definitely one wave. The second clip each time that I play them here, this is his slowdown on his original edit. Now what I'm going to do with his footage is fill the frame out to 1080. Here we go. The wave's going to come in from the top. You'll notice that the date 11.9 is coded to 9.11. I always look at dates. Um, I'm going to run this. This is running at 50% speed, and I'm going to give you one more with filters added. And there's the wave again. Uh, it's a great shot because it is the first time we get to see a zoom uh, up close on the moon of the wave. And there it is really slowed down. Uh, I always shoot wide because I want the whole moon in frame. But all this footage really adds something to what we know. Now what you need, look to the right there. See that noise coming into frame? He shot at a lower resolution. And when I ran these filters, right before the wave begins, we get that noise off to the right of the moon, and it occurs a couple of times as the wave is, is traveling. This footage is slowed way down, so you'll notice as the wave goes across. Okay, he edits out. Look at all that noise out there from the find edge filter um, that's going on. And there's those lines again right before the wave begins. It's very interesting, and it makes me wonder if... Uh, if I shot at a lower resolution and then stretched the frame and used these filters. There it is big time on the right there. And it occurs right before there's the wave. Begins right after it happens. So that is very interesting to me. Um, and I want to give a special thank you to Richard as he steered me to James Hannon and uh, Fluke Skywatcher. I want to give a shout out. There's the noise on the right again. And this is his slow down with an additional 50% slow down for me and here comes the wave and you can see there's a bit of jagged noise even as the wave goes um, this one cuts short right after the uh, the wave goes by and that is indeed weird thank you so much Richard uh, for all that you've done to help further what we know about the wave this next footage is from James, James Hannon. It was shot on 6-15-13. The date numerology, interesting enough, is 666. Uh, there's the information to his channel. And I would say that his video is very reminiscent of Bill Bryson's work. You go to his channel, check out his work. And I will point out, every single capture is either right before, right after an equinox, right before, right after a solstice. Now, it's going to come in from the left top. There's the first wave moving very quickly and transparently. And I'm sorry, I guess I missed the second one. Here it comes with a little better view in from the left top. There's the first wave. And there's the second wave. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the first wave. There's the second wave. I'm looking at a small window here. I apologize. And we're going to take another close view of this with filters applied. Now this capture is reminiscent of a couple that I've shot that are very quick and clear. Here comes the first wave. There it goes, and here comes the second wave right behind it. All right, this next footage is from Defender of the Town. Fluke Skywatcher alerted me to this, and I thank you for that. The upload was done on 7-19-2013, and again, uh, we're right after the summer solstice. So there may be something to this. He also has some fantastic footage of Saturn. Planets are not easy to shoot, and his footage is very crisp. I believe the last two you've seen, this and James, are shot on a 10-inch telescope. There's the first wave coming down from the top, and there's the second wave. What you should do is look out at the outer limb of the moon, and when you see it pass, look at the lower left corner, and you'll see the wave cross. So look at the outer right edge of the moon, and there's the wave. Now glance into the lower left, and you'll see the wave come through that corner. Here it comes now.
All right, here's with filters. This was the hardest footage for me to try to enhance. Um, if you look at the outer limb of the moon, you'll see when, when the wave is crossing. Uh, it's very difficult to see on the inner left side, um, no matter what filter I applied. Here it comes, and there it is going through the lower left corner. And again, we always see two waves, which is true, except in everything but this footage that Gustav, who was the first person to confirm the lunar wave, here we are, 7 7 14. So we're, you know, 30, less than 30 days after the summer solstice. And you'll see the wave go up the upper right limb of the moon, follow the arrows. Remember where this is, it's the only time I use an arrow to indicate. But here you see three waves. And then there's even a bit more than that. But the astounding thing about this footage is when I put the filters on it and zoom in later, you can really see it traveling across the face of the moon. You can see the curvature. Um, and here we go again. And as you see the wave on the outer limb, well, maybe not on this footage. The best place to see this, this particular footage is out on the outer limb of the moon. And there's the third one coming up. So let me get the filters applied here, and then what you'll do is glance into the face of the moon, and you'll be able to see the wave traveling. Okay, look to the outer limb so you can identify where the wave is starting. There's one, and glance into the face of the moon. You may have to stop and rewind, but you can completely see... Uh, the wave traveling across the whole face. Um, I reviewed this footage for a good four or five days. I forget now, but it was quite a bit because it was the first uh, confirmational video I'd been handed, so I wanted to be darn sure that I was looking at. Now, in this footage, you can really see the waves traveling across the face of the moon. Um, I've applied some filters and brightness and contrast. So this is the only example of three waves we have. There it is backwards and then I'm going to run it forwards again. So thank you, Gustav. Please go to these channels and give these people some respect for adding what we know uh, to this very crucial event. So here we go. Um, here's the Crow 777 footage. We're going to do them in the order they were filmed. And again, they my footage falls before or after equinoxes. This is the Holy Grail footage. Uh, if I had not shot this particular footage, all footage would have been dismissible by those who want to argue against this being a real event. Uh, just the camera pan and the way that it was shot allowed me to know that it was an actual event and it allowed me to use a measuring stick against all other footage that I saw where there was no doubt in my mind that we're looking at something that has gone unreported by NASA, which is not surprising. So here it comes at the bottom. The wave comes in, it goes out of frame, and then catches up to the camera, which has always meant this was never an equipment failure, uh, not to mention that it's an organic wave and digital instruments don't fail that way. Just after the first wave begins, four seconds, there is a UFO shadow of some type that crosses the upper left limb. Um, I wonder if that's some kind of a satellite device that is involved in this some way. Here's the second wave, filmed March 9th, 2014. On all my footage, I've been able to measure the angle of the wave, which I present you here. Um, I don't know whether the other scopes were polar aligned or equatorial aligned, so I don't really have the ability to do that. And truthfully, they're also zoomed in, so it would be a bit difficult to understand the orientation of the moon, although I suppose we could look at a model for that night. Okay, here comes the wave. There's wave number one. And there's the second wave. And this is one of the unusual filmings where uh, the, the moon is not very near full on that. Here's wave, third wave, March 14, 2014. On a couple of these, and I've forgotten which they are, I would have to go through again, uh, the waves look a bit different. They look a little more flat than every other filming that I've done, and that's on two of the clips. But you can determine that for yourself. And as you can see, after the 2012 filming, they became much more difficult to see, more clear, traveling more quickly. Okay, it's going to come in from the top, and I'll cue you right when it's going to start. I have a marker down on this one. Okay, and it's getting ready to come in from the top here. 
and there's the first wave and you can see it bowing around the moon much much clearer and quicker wave here's the fourth wave that I filmed on March 14 2014 now you notice the look of the moon changes a bit um, and that is due to the way I am filming and how much light is on the moon whether I'm using my uh, city light filter um, there's a few things so some of them have kind of a more blue look which indicates I'm using the city light filter uh, because there's a need for that on that particular night alright I have a marker down on this one as well and I'll indicate when the wave is going to come in from the top and here it comes there's the first wave from the upper left and there's the second wave and that is much quicker and much clearer uh, then if you compare that to the previous waves or even the 2012 footage now this next one is kind of a special wave to me it's very it was very difficult to see four of us were looking at the monitor because we were filming the eclipse on this night April 14 2014 these waves occurred as the eclipse was beginning in earnest um, I may do more work on the eclipses because I think they're manipulated um, I have some evidence that shows this in past uh, past clips but when I filmed the last solar eclipse I really saw some things that got me thinking and here it comes from the top there's the first wave coming from the upper right there it goes down off the bottom here comes the second one passing the equator down to the lower left uh, it's a very subtle wave and as I indicated there was a an eclipse going on as this happened all right, the 2012 footage which we're going to go over here uh, is the most important footage I've ever shot and just because of the way this footage was shot it allowed me to understand after I figured it out that this is a filmed event look at the bottom and I'm gonna run uh, with some filters first to show you know the prominence of the wave over the face so that you can see the curvature and then I'm gonna break this out so that you can see the energy pulse that happens on the lower left limb of the moon just as the wave is about to begin and bear in mind four seconds after the first wave an object goes up the up upper left limb so here we go down to the bottom left to see the pulse that occurs there's backwards and forwards and you can see the curvature of the pulse that happens the energy pulse now as it goes up a little you're gonna see a sweep across the face of the moon there it is backwards it goes from left to right you can see just kind of an energy sweep occur all right here we go again and you can see the energy sweep and then the wave starts up and you can completely measure the bow of this going around the sphere um, it's a measurable thing and if you consider that each pixel has a value in distance it's probably quite a bow the problem is, is I don't know what the distance of the moon is and I have a feeling it's much closer than we've been told but saying that and proving that are two different things the grid overlay matches the tilt of the wave from our point of view here's at 150 percent with the grid layover to indicate the angle from our point of view of the wave traveling over the, uh, the lunar surface if there is such a thing here we go at 100 percent this is real time real speed there's a slight contrast manipulation here so I mean we're in a new era here where are the space agencies um, if I know this and all these other people have filmed it this is a known thing um, and that's all there is to it um, they this is something that's being hidden you know so many people have come and seen this since 2012 um, and they're from all walks of life professionals uh, I've even been contacted by four people from observatories who have told me that they are directed at the observatories they are currently or have worked at in the past not to look at the moon unless they are directed to do so right here I'm showing that the wave goes out of frame then catches up to the camera this has always been proof uh, that it's a filmed event even though uh, this you know I showed this people have you know badgered me non-stop and ignored this evidence but it means what it means there it is there it is catching up to the camera uh, that has always been bulletproof evidence um, that I knew and understood 
that this was a real event and I stuck to my guns and now we have confirmation on a level that's just not easily dismissible. All right, as we close out here, I want to give a special thanks to a good friend of mine in the Great White North who has supported the Crow Discovery Project, and he has opened some new doors. I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, sir, and I congratulate you on the new endeavors that you will be engaged in. So in closing, we have footage here that is not dismissible anymore. There is a wave event occurring on our moon. Uh, I have guessed that it may be a hologram. There have been many speculations on what it is, but the point is, is it's a confirmed event. Where is NASA? Where are any space agencies? Where are the observatories on this planet, on this lunar wave? If I can have this much footage of an occurrence like this, there's no way that these people aren't aware of it. So they're hiding it. Once again, we find that they are not informing us about things that we deserve to know about. So, you know what? We don't need them. We'll do it on our own, and there it is, the lunar wave. Um, I hope we can get some more answers this year on what this may be, but at least we know for a fact that there is a lunar wave event on our moon. So there it is. Cheers.